Okay, I always like to start with something interesting, and I ran across this story. It happens in southwest Florida, Marco Island, Sanibel Island. Those are just beautiful islands. I don't know if you've ever been there. And they're trying to figure out a mystery, because on the beaches, they're finding these deep holes. I mean, holes up to five feet deep and four feet wide. Okay, with shovels left in the holes. I mean, is it some monster from the sea making these huge homes in the sand on the beach? No, it's TikTokers. That's right. It's a newest TikTok challenge. How deep can you dig? So, <laughs> and so the city officials are coming out saying, listen, okay, we don't care if you dig the hole, but you have to fill it up because people are falling into the holes oh as they're gosh. walking on the beach. So just a PSA for anybody who's uh, a TikToker digging holes on the beach. Okay, dig them, take your video, but then you want to make sure that you fill the hole. Oh, man. Okay, this is, you know, speaking of, you know, Snoop Dogg, he loves the beach. Do you know why? Because of the seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's another uh, episode of Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast about all things digital. Now, you can get Tech Refresh as its own podcast, or you get it if you subscribe to Kim Commando Today podcast. You get Tech Refresh on Fridays because... It's a great way to start your weekend. And if you're not subscribed, well, come on. Search for Commando wherever you get your podcasts, with a K, of course. And joining us here on Tech Refresh, as always, we have first up our amazing content queen, Ali Selgman. What do you have coming up for us on the podcast today? I'm going to tell you about a tricky new phishing attack and a little tip if you, like me, always have way too many tabs open on your phone. Ooh, mm -hmm. I always have a lot of tabs. Yeah. Open. Oh, yeah. It's guilty, raising my hand. <laughs> and then, of course, we have our magnificent millennial, our dedicated internet scout, Matthew Heffel, and share with us what's on your list, Matt. We're going to be talking about some NASA news, as well as a really handy, simple trick to keep yourself safe online, and a TikTok sound that has gone mega viral. Ooh, Ooh, mega. Maybe yeah. it's going mega viral in the holes on the beach. Probably. That's what it is. You <laughs> took it away. Watch Don't your step. About that. <laughs> yes, watch your step is right. All right, we're going to start with the news, some important tech developments to keep you in the know. And the way that we pay for cars is changing. I don't know if you've realized this, that, that we are getting subscriptions everywhere we turn, right? I mean, it's like $5 a month for this, $10 a month for this. I mean, Barry pays $8 a month for his helmet, for his bike, <laughs> okay, in case he falls. And I'm reminded, I'm like, okay, you only bike with me. So if you fall, I'm the one who's going to be calling 911. He should anyway, give you the $8. Yeah, exactly. You know what? More than that, let me tell you. Have you ever gone biking with this guy? <laughs> over here, over here. Anyway, I digress. Uh, with Tesla, it's $200 a month for uh, self-driving features, which I don't think anybody should ever use. Well, Word is out that BMW is going to start charging for monthly access on some of the vehicle features, like heated seats. That's right. So if you hit the button because you want your seat heated, another happy message will pop up on the screen on the dash. It says, oh, we're so happy that you'd like heated seats. Then we need you to hand over your credit card right now because that's a subscription-based plan. And you're going to have to pay $18 a month to turn on the heated seats that are already installed in your car. No kidding. Yes. That's right. Uh, roughly, they say $180 a year for one year subscription to heated seats in your car. $300 for three year subscription. See if you go longer, oh, you get yeah. to save some money. Or $415 for unlimited access for heated seats. Okay. Now, what if you say, okay, I have the heated seats and you live in a really cold part of the world, part of the country, like Minnesota, North Dakota, mm -hmm. you know, Wyoming, Montana, and you're like, oh, you know, I want that heated steering wheel too. That's gonna cost you $12 more a month. Jeez. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now if you, now let's say it's cold and you have your heated seats on and the heated steering wheel and you say, you know what, I'm gonna be driving from like Hamilton, Montana to, I don't know, Fargo, North Dakota or someplace like that. And of course you want to put your car in cruise control. Well, no. that's $42 a month. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Right. Now, let's say that you want to hook your phone, your iPhone into your BMW. No. Come on. This has gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Okay, 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 now that you know this, okay, I'm gonna ask you. So it's $18 a month to turn on the heated seats, uh, $12 a month to use the heated steering wheel, $42 a month to use cruise control. Now keep in mind that all this technology is already in the car. Built in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you want to hook your f iPhone in to work with your BMW, how much is that gonna cost you? 20 bucks. Just, 
a month. Yeah, I was thinking what? 25. Um, well, it's two hundred sixty-five dollars. What? But that is a one-time fee. Oh okay. my gosh. Okay, wait. There's one more I have to oh, tell man. you about. Okay, it makes you not want to buy MD BMW. <laughs> <Absolutely> <laughs> Seriously. Um, okay. Now there's a feature that switches your high beam lights on and off in response to oncoming traffic. No okay. way. Okay, so this is like a safety. Feature. Yeah. Okay. Twelve dollars a month. I think that should be illegal. Well, that sounds illegal that, to me. What That's keeps a hackers feature? from just stopping them? To, how can a hacker just not plug a device into it and, and just I'm hack sure all they this stuff? It out, right. But, it's, but I just think it's, it's so. If BMW does this, which it's already working in parts of Europe, everyone's going to do it. Yes, everything's coming out there. So, you know, BMW is going to make you know BMW potential owners look for other things like bus, metro, walk, right? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of that. Okay, Matt, so talk to us about that image that everybody has seen so far, the James, what, the James Webb Telescope? Yeah, the James Webb Telescope. It's sitting about a million miles away from Earth right now. And, you know, I wanted to bring this up. I talk about space a lot on this show, and uh, I know that she's the content queen. I kind of want to add Spaceman to my uh, title. <laughs> oh, oh, Spaceman. That? Spaceman. Okay, so wait a minute. So now you want to be the magnificent millennial. Yep. The Internet Dedicated Scout yep. and Spaceman? And Spaceman, please, yes. I appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, think about it. Think about it. I don't know. It's, you know, it's getting to be a little much. <laughs> okay, so tell us about the James Webb Telescope, a million so miles. They released a set of images this week that are amazing. So these are being taken of multiple parts of the night sky, but the one that everybody has seen is of a small bit, and what they said online was that if you were standing on Earth and you held a grain of sand up at arm's length, that's the amount of sky that they took this picture of. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh you're kidding. Yeah, a grain of sand held at arm's length is the amount of sky that this picture is of, which is incredible. But if you look really closely at this image, you'll notice that not only are there stars, but anything that doesn't have a flare coming off of it is actually another galaxy and oh. so if you look at the image you're going to notice a little ring around the center and it kind of looks like things are distorted around that ring what that actually is doing is they've used a natural telescope built in space so it's not a, a, like we built it it's basically using the gravitational forces let's all put on our science hats the gravitational <laughs> forces of a large grouping of galaxies to be able to bend space time around it so that we can see farther into the universe and scientists are saying that this image can view galaxies that are so far away that they are going away from us faster than the speed of light. So if wow. we didn't have this, we would not ever be able to see these galaxies. So it's like a one-time. One time, yeah. We will wow. never be. These are the only time we will ever be able to see these galaxies that are you know, so far something. away. That's really cool. Yeah. Now, you know, because Barry was trying to explain it to me because you know he was Doctor Science sure. <laughs> on radio for. Years. So we always have like a lot of things. As a matter of fact, like you know, whenever Ian would act up. And and I would look at Barry and I'd just and say, you know what, Barry, you know, honey, um, Ian was wondering, like, really, how does Pluto work? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Ian would look at me from, and I'd be like, standing behind Barry, and Barry go, well, son, let me tell you about Pluto, <laughs> yeah. you know. And Ian would look at me like, going, oh. that was like the version of you grounded. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly, yeah. exactly, only in real time. <laughs> but he was telling me about that that you can kind of see like a black hole in the middle, right? Right. So it, it, it kind of looks like a black hole, but what they're saying is it's not actually a black hole. It's multiple oh. galaxies that are really, really close together, and so their gravitational mm. field is so huge that it allows space time to be bent around it. Crazy. Well, you know, that makes sense because, you know, black holes aren't bright enough to get any attention. <laughs> it's just not. Just not. It's just, just bad. Do you guys have any pictures that you love, like a single picture that you have that you cherish and you hold really dear, like a picture of yes. a loved one or something like yeah. that? Well, you know, those pictures are probably really valuable to you, but they might not be as valuable as this image because over the years, it took three decades, over 30 years, and 10 billion dollars <laughs> for these images. So if you have a photo that you think is really wow. important, think about how much that single photo is worth. <laughs> Probably not $10 billion. Probably not. <laughs> yes, from you know your tax dollars at work department there you go. right there. <laughs> okay, so Allie, oh, it seems like you're like becoming our scammer of the week reporter too. Well, that's because I could be the scammer of the hour reporter, Kim. Mm. There's so much okay. junk out there. I do my best to tell you about the ones that I think might fool you because they're actually pretty good. So... 
Let's lay out one of the clas classic phishing techniques. You're sitting there minding your own business and you get an email or a phone call. It's very urgent and there's a problem with your network. It's been compromised or maybe your credit card or your account or whatever a scammer can use to get access to your phone or your computer. We know where this is going, right? So you yes. work for a big company. That's good because you can contact IT and say, hey, what's going on? Is this real? Uh, if you own a small business or if this just is your own personal stuff, what do you do? I will tell you what not to do. <laughs> it's not to trust that person behind the email or the phone call. No. Yeah, it turns <laughs> out. So cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, they say scammers are pretending to be from CrowdStrike and other no. major security companies. Most of the time oh. with these scams, it's all really mysterious. It's IT calling from where? Blah, blah, Who blah. cares? Yeah. Doesn't matter. Um, but in this case, they're using real company names and branding, and it means that even more people are falling for the trick. So in this case, you get yeah. an email, uh, and they say, we're from your company's data security vendor, and we've discovered abnormal activity. There's a potential breach, and so we need to check your machine. They give you a case number, a phone number. The emails look really good. If you go to the official sites, they match, and so there's no big red flag there. So maybe you're fooled and you call the number. The person at the other end is gonna try very, very, very hard to convince you, I need access to your machine. I need you to download this remote admin tool. I need to get in there, see what's up. Now the weird part about this scam, CrowdStrike says at this point, it's not exactly clear what they're doing once they get into your system, but something really, really similar was happening in March and it was really just to put malware on computers. Mm. So we can guess it's probably similar to that. And they're probably also looking for targets that you know, are big enough that if they fall through the trick, they can, you know, carry mm -hmm. out a ransomware attack. Yeah. So in any case, our takeaways, if anyone calls you saying that they are IT support or emails you and they need to get into your machine, hang up the phone, delete the email. Um, if, you know, the only IT help you can ever really trust is the help that you seek out yourself. If they are coming to you, that is a red flag. That's good. That, you know, that's a good, that's a really good point, Ellie. I mean, if they're coming to you and you didn't ask for them, right. okay, <laughs> tell them to go away. Yes. Okay. And then if this is through your work email, call someone at work, you know, call someone you work with, call someone directly and say, hey, what's up? Is this real? Uh, I bet it's not. Scammers are just really, really good at writing convincing emails these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's always good advice and it's always good reminder that, you know, while we may be going on vacation, taking some time off, okay, they don't, no. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the scammers are always out there in full force. Okay, so we went from cybersecurity to space. <laughs> I talked about cars. I'm gonna talk about science. Okay. Science. Okay, do you cry? Do either of you cry when you cut onions? Um, sometimes. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. It yeah, depends I on do, the onion, I do. but yeah. Yeah, that's true. It does depend on, and here's why. Okay, there's the name of the chemical that the onions store in their membranes to protect themselves from predators, the predator being your knife, <laughs> okay? It's called isoallium. Now, I'm sure I mispronounced that, okay? Uh, but that's the best I could do, <laughs> all right? So when the membranes are destroyed in the onion, see, you never thought about this, right? That chemical is released, and that's what makes us cry. Well, after decades of research, scientists have finally done it. It's humanity's greatest triumph. That's right. We have some onions coming out soon that don't make you cry. Wow. Okay. Um, they say genetic engineering was not used in the development, so we don't have to like worrying about like eating onions and throw and like growing like a third arm or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, the onion was created solely, they say, through the cross pollination of mild varieties. Hmm. Okay. Now, they're called sunions. <laughs> of course, they're not are. making this up. They're called sunions. And they're being sold in Europe right now, heading to the United States. Um, it, they're four times the cost of regular onions. So if you, instead of spending like 50 cents for an onion, you're gonna spend two bucks for the <laughs> onion, right? So it's gonna be like up to you to see if that's really worth it. You know, I, I know a really bad joke about an onion. Should I, I don't know if I should tell it. Who, who, okay, who's doing the joke at the end it's of the me. podcast? Okay, so your joke, scale of one to 10. I'm going to say seven and a half. Ooh. I don't want to oversell it. Right. I think it's All a right. solid joke. Seven and a half. Okay, so seven and a half. Okay, this one's about, I think this one's a seven. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to, okay, it's an old joke. Okay. Okay, it's about an onion. Okay. How did the Jewish onion greet his long lost cousin? How? How did the, just one word. Shout out. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I kept going. Shout All right. Shout <laughs> yeah, you know, it's had something to do like that. It's like, oh, shut up. Shut up. 
Okay, just a quick reminder, this is not the Kim Commando Show podcast. If you want that, head over to getkim.com, and that's where you can sign up. You can also sign up over in Apple Podcasts if you like. All right, coming up here on Tech Refresh, we're going to talk about cleaning up tabs. We're going to tell you about if your phone has been hacked. Uh, since the crypto crash has happened, what's going on with Bitcoin mining? And as always, as we mentioned, there's that great joke at the end. And Allie promises us that you're going to laugh at least seven times with this at joke. Least. So stay right where you are. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast about all things digital. And how would you like to get something free? Yes, not just this podcast, something free with no strings attached. Well, that's where you want to get our free guides that's for Windows or Mac. And you can take your tech know-how to the next level. I'm talking about search tricks where you can find programs and files in the snap. You can have some keyboard shortcuts. Uh, how you can edit photos the quick and easy way without downloading or paying for any programs. We've got some messaging shortcuts so you can get your text right on your computer and some free downloads. Yes, free programs that you're going to love for your Mac or Windows and you know it's not going to give you malware. So I know you're sitting there saying, oh, where do I get my free guide, Kim Commando and friends? Well, you go one place. That would be commando.com slash free guides. That's me like to make it easy. Commando.com slash free guides. Go now while you're thinking about it, commando.com slash free guides. All right. So this part of the podcast where we like to talk about some party tricks and the plan isn't necessarily a party trick because it seems like a question that we get all the time. My phone is hacked. Mm -hmm. What do I do? I know that somebody's in my phone, Kim Commando. <laughs> I know it. I know it. All right. So I'm sure you've heard about the apps that parents install on their kids' phones to see where they've been. They look at their web history. Uh, make sure that they're not looking at porno sites and how much time they're spending on Snapchat and TikTok and all that other stuff. Well, spy apps are also a big weapon in relationship drama. And we're talking about secret key lotting apps that let you see your partner or spouse's email, their photos, their texts, the location, their social media accounts, basically everything on the phone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's where it is. So there are some signs to look out for. Number one, your battery is draining faster than usual. Okay. And you're like, wow, what happened here? Okay. Or maybe you see an increase in data usage because when it's capturing all that information, it has to send it back some way and it's going to use your data plan to do that. Uh, your phone might be hot to the touch, even though you haven't been using it. Hmm. Yes, that's a tricky sign. And then you want to look at your screen time reports on your phone that will show you exactly how you used your phone. And you'll be like, wow, I don't know if I was on my phone at four o'clock in the morning. I thought I was <laughs> sleeping. Uh, you also check your account at the Apple App Store, or Google Play Store for any apps that you know that you didn't download. So if you think that there could be a keylogger in your phone, the worst thing you can do is Google search, remove keylogger, <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> you're just going to get something worse. So it's really simple. Just back up your phone. And I say back up your phone, you know, your videos, your photos, all your email, your text, your important stuff. And then you have to go down and do a big factory reset. And then it'll give you this big warning that will say, everything on your phone is about to be erased. And you're like, oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Make the bad keylogger go away. <laughs> And so that's, and we have some more steps about this over on the website. So if you're having any issues, just search our website, commando.com for, I don't know, secret keylogger, remove keylogger, good stuff like that. All right. So Matt, these bit.ly links, I think you have to explain what bit.ly is first. Uh, bit.ly is a site that allows you to take long links and shorten them into maybe 12 to 15 characters. They're smaller. It makes them easier to add to emails or messages, what have you. But... We're not the only ones that use them. Hackers use them all the time. And if you've learned anything from watching Kim Commando over the years, you probably have learned that the internet is a dangerous place sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and that these links can be used for nefarious purposes. So if you ever see one of these links and you're, you're questioning yourself, grab that link, copy it, post it into your browser. Do not hit enter right now. Wait for a minute. Press the plus key at the end and then click enter. It'll then take you to a separate site, a separate page on the bit.ly link site that'll show you what the full URL is. So that way you don't have to just guess and be like, oh, I don't know what this bit.ly link is going to take me to. It'll show you, it'll be youtube.com slash whatever or whatever they're trying to show you. It'll show that full URL. This way you can just make sure, double check. So it's not like surprise. Yeah, surprise, it's malware. <laughs> yeah, that's something we always right. tell people. If you get a you know an email with a link in it that you weren't expecting, yeah, you can hover over it and see what the link is. But if it's a bit.ly link, you mm -hmm. don't know yeah, what it actually exactly. is. Yeah, that's smart, Matt. Mm -hmm. See, now that's, you know, Matt, that's a really great tip because that's an example of like an insider secret that nobody knows. Right. 
you know, that probably is like some developer uh, <laughs> a bit least said, you know what, let's make it really easy. So when we want to see where this goes, let's just put a plus sign at right, the end. Exactly. Right. And so that's really handy. That's some good stuff. Thanks yeah. for that, Matt. Okay. So Allie, I know that you are like the tab queen. You have tons <laughs> of tabs open. All right. And I, and you know, and since I will tell you that since, you know, we've been working together, 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 I've been doing like a lot of right clicking to open up in a new tab. Yeah. So now I'm blaming you for that. <laughs> sure, Kim. Nice, okay. nice try. You know, I like to think of myself as a recovering tab hoarder. I, I do a little okay. better. My goal is always at the end of the day to close down all my tabs. If I do that, I feel like it's a good day. I usually try. Uh, one place that I do not keep things very clean is my phone. I opened up the Chrome browser on my phone recently, and there were 20-something tabs. And the sad part is I was like, hmm, that's reasonable. That's not so yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because hey, at least it's not 30. I mean, 30 come on. Because <laughs> the thing is, when you open up your browser on your phone, you just automatically go, you make a new tab, you start your search, whatever you want to do. It's a pain to close them one by one. The good news is you don't have to. There are some little secrets to get it done faster. So on an iPhone, it takes two clicks. You have your browser open. There's a little icon up at the top. It looks like two squares on top of each other. Hold your finger on that, and something will pop up that says, close all tabs. It's great. Click that. Done. They're all gone. <laughs> Mind, Mind blown. blown. They do that. <laughs> yeah. Lucky you. If you have an Android, it's even easier. I did this the other day, and it was like kid on Christmas. I was so excited. So you just say, hey, Google, close all tabs. And you get a little confirmation window that pops up and says, are you sure? Yes. Close them. Now, this is. And say, so, now, wait, wait. I got to say something now. Somebody's listening to this. I just closed all their tabs. <laughs> <laughs> just closed all their tabs. <laughs> You're welcome. You're, you're such a prankster. You're so welcome for that. Yeah, it's nice because Google and Chrome are, you know, peanut butter and jelly. It's really easy to do. I hope that feature comes to iPhone because I think it's a really useful that voice command. That would be nice. That would yeah. be nice. I know. Siri, she's always lagging behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just seems. I mean, you know, it's and, you know, so, so many people, you know, they get they get anxious when they use different browsers like, you know, Chrome and Firefox and especially, you know, Edge. <laughs> I mean, you get a little bit on edge with that. <laughs> Hey, if you like these quick tips, make sure that you get our Daily Tech Update podcast. Wherever you get your podcasts, just so search for Commando with a K. And every day we do a little news story and a quick tip that you're going to love. And each one's only 60 seconds. Again, that's the Daily Tech Update. And just search for Commando with a K. You're going to love it. You will, I promise. Okay, coming up, the latest in Bitcoin mining, you won't believe, especially if you're one of those guys that, you know, you've called the show, you've emailed us. I've sent it, Allie these notes like, you know, hey, Kim Commando, can I make money? <laughs> Bitcoining, <laughs> and yes, they actually sound like that, don't they, Ali? Exactly they do. What they, sound like. they, they, all, they do. Uh, and we have our trivia at the end, and Matt has, you know, what the web is talking about. So we are hip and in the know. And anytime you have to say that you're hip and in the know, you're probably not, <laughs> but that's okay. And then we have a really funny joke at the end before we say goodbye. So stay right where you are. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast, as I like to say about everything digital. And we have these fantastic newsletters. And um, Allie, why don't you talk about it? Because we have these specific newsletters. We do. So we have our tips and our news, but we also have things a little more targeted. So if you have an iPhone, a Mac, we have our Apple newsletter. If you have an Android phone, we've got our Android newsletter. And if you have a Windows PC, you guessed it, we have a Windows newsletter. So these are great. It's tips that you're definitely going to be able to use. Sometimes we throw in some security warnings. It's often just cool stuff you can do with your devices. So if you go over to commando.com slash subscribe, add it to your list. Make sure you get the one that applies to whatever you use. If you have an iPhone and a Windows PC, great. There's two emails for you. If you're a, a Windows Android person, and if you're an Apple person all across the board, one email to sign up one. for. Yeah. That's it. And I will tell you, I, I, I'm going to divulge a secret out, uh -oh. is that we were having one of our big powwow focus group meetings. And th you know, these are some where a <laughs> lot of brain cell activity happens. But we're talking about, you know, strategies and goals and paradigms and, you know, throwing ideas against the wall and on our virtual whiteboards. Not exactly. Okay, this is it was a Google Meet call, <laughs> and I said, you know, how about we like beef up the small business newsletter? So we're gonna start doing that. Mm -hmm. So if you have a small business, make sure that you head over to commando.com slash subscribe and sign up for that small business newsletter. It only comes out once a week, but we're gonna put a lot of effort and energy behind it. So make sure that you sign up now. All right. Well, now you are no longer the amazing content queen, Ellie. You have become. <laughs> The crypto princess. Indeed, I have. Okay, uh, the other night, this will get back to crypto, just stay with me. The other night, 
my husband and I were walking the dog. It was 9 p.m., and it was 107 degrees out still here in Phoenix. Uh, uh, things are very hot in Texas, too. So hot that the, state, the state's Energy Council is worried that they're not going to have enough power to keep houses cool. It's not just the heat. There's less solar or less wind power being produced right now, which really doesn't help things. And that leads us to crypto. So there's a lot less power for all those Texan Bitcoin miners. It's where 11% of the country's Bitcoin mining happens. Wow. Is that is it the biggest state? It's not. It's Georgia. Georgia's like what? 30%. Isn't that crazy? Is that because of the electricity rates? The electricity is cheap. Uh, politicians are very happy to get Bitcoin miners there. And so, you know, less oh, regulations, interesting. Interesting. nicer rules, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So these specialized computers, mining rigs, they work really hard to solve math equations. You solve the equation, you win the Bitcoin. Great. But it takes a lot of power to run those machines and to cool everything to make sure that they're running right. And there's just not much power to go around in Texas. So a lot of the big crypto miners have either scaled back their operations or shut down entirely. Wow. Uh, they all agree, yes, human lives are a lot more important than cryptocurrency because, seriously, people die when there's yeah. no power and it's this hot out. Um, and, you know, the 20 thousand dollar bitcoin price uh, probably makes that decision hmm. a lot easier a lot easier to yeah sure. right now um all this got me thinking though how much power does bitcoin actually use so there's a site called digiconomist um they have something called the bitcoin energy consumption index sounds very fancy if you spend uh, 10 seconds on this site you can tell they're very anti-crypto uh. but they've got good <laughs> data so we'll go with it so their data shows that a single Bitcoin transaction, we're not talking about mining a Bitcoin, which can take a very long time, just a single transaction, is equivalent to the power consumption of the average U.S. household for 49.7 days. Whoa. No, yes. honest? Yes. Just one transaction? One transaction. Like, so like me sending you some- 49 days of power. Ethereum or something? That's, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, the carbon footprint, is the equivalent of watching 135,000 hours of YouTube. <laughs> okay. It's like one week. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's Matt one week on yeah, YouTube. Exactly. <laughs> Time works differently when Matt's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah so uh, it's a lot of power. All this, of course, is why Bitcoin operations, they're trying to move to renewable energy. They don't like the high prices of power either, so that'd be better. Um, I've talked before about that massive Bitcoin farm, you know, mining operation that's coming to yeah. Texas. They already broke ground on it. It's going to run solely on solar power, oh, wow. solely. Oh, nice. Um, and it's going to use Tesla's storage tech. So they're going to try to get away from using the regular power grid. In the meantime, let's hope the wind picks up in Texas and let's hope that things don't get too much hotter. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder if those guys from Texas, the miners from Texas are moving to Georgia. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, mean if, if things are better there, if the, if the power stays cheaper, you know, you know, they can just, you know, put that thing right in the car. Come on, honey. We're going to Georgia. Let's <laughs> go. you like peaches. Yes, exactly. Oh, have you tried the latest the Georgia peaches? Oh, yeah. I just had one this morning. They were so, it's so good. So good. Go get yourself some, Alex. You haven't had any. Because meanwhile, Matt and I are going, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Those are so good. All right. Speaking of Matt, you are not only our TikTok star and our magnificent millennial and our space man. Space man. <laughs> Is that it? You, you're also our dedicated Internet scout. I mean, are we going to have like 10 titles for you by the like, you know, within the next it's gonna month? Be like Game of Thrones. You know, it's going to be like, these are my 17 titles before you say my name. Here comes Matt, the <laughs> Internet scout of the space man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's what the heck is uh, happening on TikTok now that we need to know about? Well, there seems to be a new viral song or sound pretty much every other day on TikTok. And it'll usually be a pop song which people make little dances to or whatever. Well, with Stranger Things being so popular, there was a strange thing that happened on TikTok. There was a single scene within the final season of Stranger Things where one of the main characters um, is in a room with one of the other characters and she starts being uh, mind controlled by the big bad guy Vecna and her <laughs> eyes are turning white and he's trying to wake her up and so he's like, oh, Christy, wake up, Christy, wake up, and she's not waking up. Well, this one scene was then taken and auto-tuned and turned into this whole song. So first it was like a 20 second clip, which we'll play right here. And then they took that, and they're like, you know what? Let's make a whole song out of it. And so they turned it into a full three-minute song that is now on YouTube with 400 million views in less than a month. So, this oh my gosh. I will say it's a pretty catchy song. Yeah. It actually you know just what? sounds I like a pop song. It's kind of crazy. 
Yeah, it is. I mean, you wouldn't expect it to have come from Stranger yeah. Things. I mean, if somebody said, here, you know, like, here, take a listen to this. And you'd be like, oh, OK, I get it. You <laughs> know, right. it's, I'm going to I'm going to hear this on my Peloton. Cody, the instructor, I'm sure he'd be the first one to play it. Just jam you know? to Chrissy Wake Up. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Chrissy Wake Up. Or they'd be like, OK, come on, girls, let's go. Come on. <laughs> So hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people use this sound in TikToks. And you have to remember that Stranger Things, this final season, has only been out for like a month. So within <laughs> that short amount of time, this was taken, turned into a single sound, then turned into a little sound bite, then turned into a whole three-minute song, then added like just how quickly the internet can move on these things and turn these into huge viral songs is amazing. And it also proves you never know what the next viral song on TikTok is going to be. <laughs> Who would have guessed, you know? Yeah. No, you never know. And you know what's interesting? So last night I was laying in bed and I was kind of like hyped up because I had like this big day mm -hmm. and had some really cool meetings and stuff. So I was laying in bed and I was going through Instagram reels. And so Barry's like, what is that? Because he had never seen it. And I'm like, and and so he grabs my phone and he's laughing. <laughs> he gets away. He's like, yeah, and he's going. And I'm like, what are you laughing? He goes, oh, because I have like all golden retriever. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And so he, so he's like, so is it all golden retriever all the time? <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> this it's is targeted, not. Targeted, honey. <laughs> yeah, it's all targeted. So for those of you who are listening and you haven't yet experienced the joy of just sitting there mindlessly throwing through TikToks or Instagram reels or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, it's actually kind of, I know you're not supposed to have your device in the bedroom <laughs> and all that blue light stuff, but it's actually can be a little fun yeah. and, and a little relaxing to get that down. I mean, to just kind of chill down a little bit. All right. Uh, let's see. Just want to remind you to follow us on, so on social media, wherever you go, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, just head over to slash Kim Commando where you ever head out and hit that big follow sign. Don't be ghosting us. We don't like that. As a matter of fact, and you guys know Kip. Mm -hmm. And so we were in a meeting yesterday and with uh, some folks from an advertising agency and Kip looks at everybody. There's like nine people around the table oh and Kip and, and says, I don't know why they've been ghosting me <laughs> just like that. Look at and him. then and, yeah, and then everybody goes, looks, go, whoa. And Kip goes, yeah, I know what that means. I know what it means. Okay. <laughs> then he declared that he was hip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> then he did. You're right. That's great. All right. Coming up, we have trivia that you don't want to miss, as well as a fantastic joke at the end. I promise you, you're going to laugh. Hey, welcome back to Tech Refresh. It's your weekly fun podcast about all things digital. If you have a small business, make sure that you pick up our newest ebook. It's the guide to online freelancing, successful online freelancing, where we walk you through how to start your own business. I did it. No investors, no debt. And you can do it too. So head over to Amazon and get our guide to online freelancing. Just search for Commando with a K. All right. It's time now for trivia, but we need to up the steps. Yes. I mean, we need to have like a chick, a chick, a chick, a chick, a chick. It's like, oh, I lost, oh, well, you know, <laughs> or I won, yay. Okay. So I think, you know, maybe for like the next six weeks, we keep tallies. And so, but there has to, it has to be like a, like something in it that you don't want to do that you have to do. Okay. So something that, that, okay, I'll, I'll go first. Okay. 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 If I lose, okay. There's one food in the world that I hate. I mean, just, I mean, it's like if if it is in the dish, I actually will say to the the, the waiter, like, oh, you have to take that out. And they're like, do you have a food, food allergy? I'm like, no, I just hate that. <laughs> and he looks and he's like, oh, okay. Um, what is it? Okay, it's not meat. It's mushrooms. Oh, really? Whoa. Okay, I hate I mushrooms. mushrooms. I, think, I do love mushrooms oh. as well. Yeah. Okay, I think it tastes like you're eating dirt. Okay, it's just I just don't like it at all. We call that earthy. I mean, <laughs> it's like it's like you know what? It's humongous fungus. That's exactly what it is. Okay. That's so funny. Okay, like so mushrooms. yeah. Okay, so maybe so, like a nice mushroom risotto for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh Delish. God, it just makes me sick thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So if I lose at the end of six weeks. And of course, we're going to have to video sure, this to course. share it with everybody. Is that I will eat a nice big bowl of mushroom risotto. Yuck. Yum. How do you feel about okay. truffles? I don't like truffles yeah, either. I was going to say most mushroom risotto probably will have like some truffle oil. Sure. So that's double the gross. Yeah. For you. Ooh, oh, extra gross. Love it. <laughs> you know, I went to, um, there's a place in Tennessee. If you ever get there, it's outside of Knoxville. It's called Blackberry Farm. Mm -hmm. 
And a friend of mine was getting married, or not married, she was, um, it was her big birthday. I think she was turning 50 or something like that. And and we went down there for her birthday party and we stayed at this Blackberry farm. And it's like this posh, posh, five-star mm-hmm. place in the middle of nowhere. But they actually, they have truffle dogs oh, there. Whoa. Oh, cool. I thought it was just pigs. Yeah, me too. No, they have these beautiful truffle dogs. And and I guess if you have a truffle dog, the guy was telling me you can make like $100,000 a year. Oh, my gosh. Off of the truffle dog. So at that point, I was almost ready to change. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about truffle mushroom. Lady. But, <laughs> but I did it. All right, how about you? How about you, Matt? You go next. Uh, I actually had been thinking about it. I was also thinking food. There is one food that I also hate, and it's very similar to mushrooms. I actually really like mushrooms, but there's one food that I hate, and if it's, in, just like Kim, if it's in a dish, I will not eat it. If it's if it's on the, the charcuterie board, I will not, I will pick around it. Do you know what it is? Is it blue cheese? No, I love blue <gasps> cheese. It's olives. I do... Oh, you know what? I don't like olives I, either, but I love olive oil. Uh, <laughs> I, I fi- Olive oil's fine, like a, a, an extra virgin where it barely tastes like olives, but like Black olives or green, especially black olives. So okay, I, what if it's the uh, what if it's the olives that have like the pimento? In see, it? there's che- if there's cheese in them, I still won't eat them. <laughs> but I feel like that would make it easier for this challenge. So I was gonna do the grossest thing and just get like a, a dollar can of black olives <laughs> from the grocery store and just eat that whole can. Oh, <laughs> okay, all right, okay, Allie. Well, I hate steak, so just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate a good filet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I sorry. It. it makes me so upset. All right. Um, the thing I hate most in the world, heights. Ooh, I am heights. an absolute baby about heights. Like, Are you really? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, like, even, like, walking across a bridge or something, if I, I can't look, like, I can't. That sinking feeling in your Ooh. stomach? Yeah. Ooh. So, I didn't want to say, you know, I don't want to jump off of this or do this or do this, but something heights. Um, so you two feel free to brainstorm. There's a roller coaster just in Phoenix at Castles and Coasters that has a loop on it. Um, it's really old and rickety, so. <laughs> no, we want her to stay around. Okay, all right. No rickety, please. No uh, carnivals. No. Yeah, that's something that I really don't like. We we went to the fair a couple years ago, and top of the Ferris wheel. Oh, don't really? like it. Right now, how do you do an airplane? I don't sit at the window seat. Mm. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I like the, the aisle. If I don't look out the window, I'm okay. And there's something about I can't fall out of a plane, and so I know I'm going to be okay. It's I something see. where I'm, like, physically could fall off an edge. So, like, you know, so, like, those videos of people walking off the edge of, like, this little path in China and no, nothing. I wouldn't even do that. Or how about the one they built that bridge in China on the side of the mountain made of glass? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely okay. not. I, and I thought, you know what, you know, things in China break. You know? <laughs> so it's like, I'm not sure if I'd want to trust my life. Okay, so heights, mm-hmm. all right. Well, I'll tell you, if anybody, if you're listening, if you have an idea for us to present to Allie, or if you want to present Allie an idea for We've heights. We've got six just, weeks to think about it. Yeah, podcast yeah. at commando.com. Meanwhile, Matt has to eat some olives. He <laughs> has to eat risotto. <laughs> yeah. and, you, and you have to go up in a small plane and do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, jump yeah. off a bridge. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's all right. We'll make sure you have a good parachute. <laughs> um, all right. So it's your turn this week to do trivia. So, okay, who's going to be keeping track score? Yeah, Matt. Matt's Matt's trivia day. I'm trivia yeah. today. I, I, oh, you're trivia I today. I'll okay, keep score. Okay, sure. I got okay. a pen. Okay. All right. Excellent. All right. And I bet you with my new title as Spaceman, I made sure that it was about space. Ooh, I wanted space to keep man. it going in that theme. All right. Rocket Man. <laughs> there you go. I like that one too. Rocket Man. The Rocket Man Heffel. Um <laughs> Sounds like a dance. Right? I like it. We have, with space in the news right now, we've all been thinking that this is a relatively new phenomenon, talking about galaxies in the universe and stuff, and it kind of is, um, but in which year did scientists finally realize that some of those dots in the sky that they thought were other stars were actually galaxies? Mm. So in which year did we realize that some of those dots were actually galaxies? 1942, 1955... 1914 or 1924. So I did it again with the letters A, 1942, B, 1955, C, 1914, or D, 1924. Oh. Hmm. Well, um. <laughs> this is an old 
point and pick, uh, get a dart. Yeah, I think this. So this is. I say it again, Matt. This is the year. What? This is the year 1942-55. No, 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 no. What, what's the question? Oh, what's the question? And what year did scientists realize that there were other galaxies? Galaxies. We okay, are not so alone. Not start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say 24. I'm feeling 1924. I don't know why, but I'm just feeling like that might be right. That was my first guess. I am going to go. We always have to do separate guesses, right? You know what? Yeah. No. I don't think we have to do that every time, <laughs> especially if I'm going to have to jump off something. Okay. So, all right. So, we are both You saying... are both correct. Dang it. Yes. Oh, right. okay. So that means okay. So that means that Matt right. I, gets a I point. I get the point. You don't want points, right? If you because if you get it wrong, right. you get a point. Okay. Yep. Yes. So in 1924, okay. uh, astronomer Edwin Hubble, who the Hubble Space Telescope is named after, announced oh, there that there go. was a small dot in the sky that was known as the spiral nebula, and it was thought to be multiple stars spinning around each other, but it turned out to be an entirely separate galaxy that was over 860,000 light years away, which meant it couldn't be part of our own galaxy. Incredible. Wow. Was that during Prohibition? Maybe they were just bored. They were just bored. <laughs> <laughs> they were all just drunk. <laughs> so, they were just shine. drinking. It's a galaxy. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, I was, I was at a uh, barbecue last weekend, and there was a ball jar full of just clear liquid. And I'm sitting there, and I thought to myself, oh, that's innovative. Somebody's using that as a water bottle. <laughs> Kim. Okay. Aww. And so, and Bless so, his, <laughs> I know. so Joe comes over and he's like, you want to try it? I'm like, what? And he's like, what's in the water bot? What's in the ball jar? I'm like, that's not water. He's like, no. And it was, um, he made it out of molasses and rum. Ooh. And it was, I think he said at least 120 proof. <laughs> Did it taste like gasoline? <laughs> yeah. You know, I just smelt it and I was like, I mean, I thought if I, I mean, I, I, th I think I was getting drunk from the fumes, okay? I mean, it's like, like, now, I'll just stick with my lemon water, please, yeah. you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Allie, now your joke, scale of one to ten, seven and a half. Seven and a half. Seven and a half laughs. Okay. No, I think you're going to have okay. one laugh, but it's going to be like okay. a... A nose laugh. Like a laugh. Nice. I hope a so. A nose laugh. Okay. Yeah. All right. A taxi passenger... Tapped on, tapped the driver on the shoulder to ask him a question. The driver screamed. He lost control of the car. He nearly hit a bus. He went up on the footpath and he stopped inches from a shop window. For a second, everything was quiet in the cab. Then the driver said, look, man, don't ever do that again. You scared the living daylights out of me. And the passenger was pretty taken aback. He apologized, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that little tap would scare you so much. And the driver sighed and he said, sorry, it's, it's really not your fault. Today's my first day as a cab driver. I've been driving a hearse for the last 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. Oh, that that was a good one. It's an eight. You know, <laughs> you know, I always, I always love when I meet people in person, IRL, mm -hmm. right? And they say, hey, you know, I just tapped into your podcasts, and I think they are the best. Aww. And so um, her woman, who I know, just a new acquaintance, her name's Paula, and uh, she came in and she looks at me and she goes, do I look different? And I said, no, you always look so beautiful. She does. She always looks so beautiful. And she, I said, no, you just look so beautiful or something like yeah. that. And she's like, no. She goes, do I look smarter? Because I've been, I listened to Tech Refresh <laughs> and now I'm listening to your other podcast. And she said, but she goes, there's so much great information in that, that I think you know, at the end, I'm like, I need to write a to-do list. <laughs> so I thought, you know what we need to do at the end? We're going to take Paula's suggestion. And so from now on, at the end of every tech refresh, we're going to give people like a to-do. Okay. okay? Yeah. Something that, that they need to walk away, a takeaway, something that they need to move forward with in their lives. Um, what would you say your takeaway is, Matt? Um, you know, it, you, everybody has seen that single image from the um, James Webb Telescope, but there's like four or five different images. So make sure you go and Google that and check out the other ones because that one image is beautiful, but some of the other ones are just mind-blowing. We put up something really cool on commando.com. We actually have all those images, and then you can kind of scroll back and forth and see the one that Hubble captured and then the new one. So you can see how different they mm -hmm. are now and how much more you know, um, detailed they are. It's really cool. 
which is crazy because I mean, it's all because of technology and that's what yeah. we do. We talk about yeah. tech and so you should definitely go do that. How about you, Al? Take care of your tabs, people. <laughs> Open up your browser <laughs> on your phone. I would be very surprised if you didn't have lots and lots of tabs open. I know I always do. So either use that voice command on an Android or click that special little button on your iPhone. And what's that voice command on an alley on Android? Hey, Google, what is that? close all tabs. <laughs> uh, see, we just did just it again. Did it for you. And then I think my takeaway is that when you are when you are sitting there on your phone, and strange things are happening, before you start thinking that oh I've got some bad malware, something's going on my phone, I have a hacker in there. I mean you know I've gotten the calls and it's really sad from you know I don't know if you remember the woman who wouldn't leave her house. Yeah because she thought she was getting hacked, is just take a deep breath, relax, and think that, you know, maybe there is a hacker, maybe it's not, but if you're ever concerned, just do that backup and do a whole factory reset. And if you have any comments about our podcast, we'd love to hear them. Head over to podcast.commando.com. Pardon me, send an email, not head over. <laughs> send an email to podcast.commando.com. Once again, that's podcast with an S at commando.com. Be nice, we all read it. And we'll see you again here next week with Tech Refresh.